Hey, this is Ian Faison from Vetropreneur Network. I'm here with Darnell Holloway from Yelp. Darnell, how's it going? Good. Thanks for having me here, Ian. I'm Darnell Holloway, Yelp's Director of Business Outreach, and my team focuses on social media education for business owners all across the world. That's awesome. Today we're going to be talking about how veteran-owned businesses can leverage Yelp to grow their customer base and grow their business. Um, I want you to do three things, either right now or after this. I want you to go to biz.yelp.com and claim your business if you haven't. Go to buyveteran.com and sign up for Novoba. It is, they are both free. And then the third thing is check out uh, the Vetrepreneur of the Year Award. So that's voi.novoba.com. Um, Uh, on how you can really use Yelp um, as a veteran-owned business. We want to cover four things today. Improving online and mobile presence, leveraging analytics, telling your story, and how you can open a dialogue with your customers uh, using the Yelp platform. Um, I want to start off with saying America truly wants to buy veteran. Um, you know, veteranpreneurs are everywhere, veteran-owned businesses are everywhere, um, and two-thirds of Americans uh, are more inclined to buy from a veteran-owned business. So. What that means for you is, uh, if your customers don't know that you're a veteran-owned business or you are a veteran entrepreneur, you need to figure out a way to tell them that, and you need to find them where they are, um, and that's on mobile devices, and, and that's you know through the internet and through online, um, and also displaying it on your on your uh, in the front of your business. So, um, go to buyveteran.com, register your business for free. Go to biz.yelp.com, register your business for free or claim your business page. Um, and uh, without that, you know, we'll get we'll get started here. So, uh, Darnell, why is Yelp essential for for a business? Yeah, I think it might be helpful to start off with what Yelp is. Uh, if folks aren't familiar, Yelp is a mobile app and website that people use to find great local businesses. Uh, it's kind of replaced the Yellow Pages in a lot of ways, and millions of consumers are using Yelp to find any and everything under the sun, uh, whether it's a doctor, a dentist. Um, your favorite restaurant, for example, and a lot of these businesses also happen to be owned by veterans, which is what brings us here today. Uh, so businesses have the ability to take control of their business page on Yelp, and we can definitely dive into that. Yeah. So, and, you know, you look at there are 3 million veteran-owned businesses across the U.S. Um, you know, there are tons of them already on Yelp. There's a ton more that are not on Yelp. Um, and, and, you know, for me, it, it's really a no-brainer if you can increase your outreach if you can have a mobile platform that is you know, in your customer's pocket every day. And people are already using this. So how many folks are using Yelp on on you know daily, weekly, monthly basis here? The numbers are, are huge. As of last quarter, 75 million people using Yelp per month on desktop, another 86 million people using Yelp on mobile devices. And the interesting thing is that most of the activity is coming from mobile now. 70% of searches on Yelp coming from mobile. 56% of content, meaning reviews and photos, are generated from mobile devices as well. The interesting thing, though, is the sense of urgency that these people have. And if you think about how people are using Yelp, they basically have a need for a specific business. Let's take a sushi restaurant, for example. If I'm on Yelp and I'm looking at your sushi restaurant, I'm, I want some sushi. I'm probably yeah. going to look at you yeah. and maybe one of your competitors and then make a final decision. And that's actually backed up by a study that Nielsen did. They asked people why you go to this site. 82% of users said that they intend to buy a product or service. Nielsen also found in that same study that 89% of people are making a purchase within a week. Uh, a lot of those purchases also happening within a day. Uh, so again, there's a great sense of urgency there and huge value proposition for businesses to have a good presence on the site. So, I mean, if you download Yelp and you, register and you claim your business for free, it's basically you have you know 70 my, 75 million people or you know plus that are able to go there find your find your business if they want sushi or if they want you know whatever it is consulting services or whatever and the vast majority within a week are going to be purchasing from you I mean it it, it seems like a really powerful tool how do you kind of track uh, who's coming to your site how do you know who's doing that and all that 
Yeah, so for the site itself, we uh, look at a lot of different uh, third-party data sets. We have Quantcast, for example, uh, as one. But the breakdown of the demographics is the majority of Yelp users are relatively affluent, educated adults. Um, 70% 70, 70 are actually 35 and older, so it's not your Justin Bieber fans out there. Um, it, no offense to anybody that likes Justin Bieber. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, these are basically people that have money to spend, and that's why they're on the site. Uh, for you individually as a business owner, you also have a set of tools that allows you to keep track of user views and also beyond just the views, customer leads. So when you log into your account at biz.yelp.com, you'll see all your traffic from desktop and mobile. The customer leads that I mentioned are things that uh, people are doing beyond just looking at your page. So we track things like calls to your business, we track clicks to your website, uh, people that are uh, downloading map directions, people that are bookmarking, adding photos, and you also get that information in an activity feed as well. So our, our Yelp users opt in if they want to share more or less information about themselves with businesses, but what that translates into for you on the business end is you're literally seeing a live stream of when people are taking these actions like calling your business. So if you were to open up your, your Yelp page right now, it might say a man in San Francisco in his 20s called your business today at 11 a.m. Wow. So we're giving that level of detail to the business owners to help them get a good understanding of the folks that are finding them on Yelp. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can and you can segment, you know, your group of customers saying like, "Hey, I know that at lunchtime every day, you know, a bunch of folks in their in their twenties and thirties are coming in," um, and be able to kind of say, you know, "Hey, if you're if you're in a certain, um, you know, if you're here for lunch on business, you know, half off, whatever, right?" Yeah, and you, you have a couple of different ways to offer promotions to people. So you can run check-in offers. These target the mobile audience. Um, you can do things like a buy one, get one free uh, discount or a percentage off. And what a check-in is, just to take a step back, is a feature on mobile where if somebody walks into your, uh, let's say you own a bar, they walk into your bar, they click a button, they check in. It tells all their friends on Yelp that they've checked in. They can also push it to Facebook and Twitter. So you're getting instant free word of mouth amplification yep. on all those social platforms. Um, you can also do things that don't have any monetary value at all. There's a, a bar in New York that I like to go to and their check-in offers one free high five from your bartender. <laughs> uh, and people check in because it's, it's funny. Yeah. No, that's, uh, <laughs> it seems like you know, to get into the having a dialogue with your customers piece. I mean, if you know someone's checking in all the time, maybe you don't necessarily recognize them, you have a very busy restaurant or something, you can respond through the Yelp app, right? Yes, so there are two ways that you can engage with customers, and you can do this on desktop at biz.yelp.com. We also have a mobile app that's specific for business owners. So you can download the Yelp for uh, business owners mobile app at, uh, on iTunes or also on Google Play. And... The, the first thing that you can do is you can respond to your reviews. So if somebody's already reviewed your business, you can respond either privately or publicly. Something that I absolutely recommend that every business gets in the habit of doing, you know, on the, if you have positive reviews, just a good way to say thanks and develop that relationship with your, your happy customers. If you have a negative review, you can turn those situations around by promptly responding. There's also another messaging feature that we rolled out recently that's getting some good traction. So it's called Message the Business. And... We know that most people now would rather text than call, yeah. especially those millennials, those Justin Bieber fans. <laughs> um, and so we give people the ability to basically send a direct message to a business right on the front end of their page. For service-based businesses, we call this request a quote. So if you're a contractor or a yeah. roofer, for example, um, people can actually message you and say, you know, how much is it going to cost to get my roof wow. fixed? Yeah, and, and, and what we find is that the businesses that are more responsive to that are actually getting more of these requests coming in. So it becomes kind of a snowball effect. Yeah, and I think, you know, we can, let's go back to the, you know, the bad review piece. And I think this is a really important thing for folks to realize that, like, the transparency that Yelp provides is the ability to respond to critique and say, hey, you know, we're, we want to get better every day. Like, we appreciate that you've done that. And I think, so like, what is the recourse? So you get a really, really bad review. You get a one star. The person, you know, is, is, is really, really upset about something. Like, what should they do? Stop, drop, and roll. Uh, there is a guy that I know in Austin, Texas. His name is Wade Lombard. He's the owner of Square Cow Movers. He's got a couple hundred reviews, perfect five-star rating. But the first review that he ever got was a negative one. And he, he told me, you know, it's real easy to rack up negative reviews in the moving industry. I live in Texas. It's hot. People usually move in the summertime. They're already angry. Uh, ownery, as he likes to say, he's got a southern drawl. 
And uh, he said, you know, we might roll a piano down somebody's driveway, something might get broken or lost. So you have to have a really great customer service strategy to get ahead of that and make sure that you don't rack up a lot of negative reviews. And specifically, when he gets anything negative that comes in, he uses this method he created called stop, drop, and roll. So to walk you through it, first thing is stop. For him, he, he told me, you know what, my business is like my baby. And if you give me a negative review, it's like you just called my kid ugly, I'm going to get defensive. Uh, so knowing that that's how he's wired, he gives himself a 24-hour cooling off period. So to be clear, he doesn't not respond, but he'll wait uh, and just make sure that there's no emotion in that response and then uh, basically stick to the facts. And then the second part is drop, which is drop the instinct to be prideful or defensive. You know, It might feel great to throw on the caps lock and send <laughs> back a snarky response, but actually you always win if you take the high road. And so again, he sticks to the facts. He also has, if anybody's responding to reviews, whether it's him or somebody on his staff, he will also have people proofread the response before That's it goes good. out publicly to make sure that it's, it's, all, uh, it's all good. And then the final thing is to roll with it. Um, you know, you can't please 100% of the people that you deal with 100% of the time, but if you're consistently and diplomatically responding to your reviews, you'll have more success than your competitors who are doing nothing. Yeah. No, the, it, it's, it's a great distinction, I think, for business owners, you know, by and large, I, I think that they don't want to, you know, come off as saying, you know, hey, we, we respond to every single thing with, no, we, we're great, we're great, we're great. And, and I think that that's kind of the wrong approach. It's just, you know, be honest, be transparent, you know, tell them how it is. My, um, my dentist uh, has a really, really good Yelp presence, which is why she's my dentist. And, uh, and I read on, on her Yelp page the other day, had an absolutely scathing review, and she laid out all the points of, like, what happened with the situation and, you know, how they're going forward and all that stuff. And it's like, oh, that's really cool that she cares enough to do that. And it's really about, like, caring about your customers, you know. Um, so do you think, you know, do all the, or not do you think, so do all the reviews show up? Is it just the bad reviews? Is it just the good reviews? Like, what's the process for, like, why a review shows up on, on your page? Yelp uses recommendation software to display the most useful and reliable reviews to our audience of consumers. And I think it's helpful to go back to the beginning. And it wasn't long after our initial launch uh, back in 2004 that we saw our first, obviously, fake review pop up on the site. Yeah. It was a uh, business owner who's given himself five stars, go yeah. figure. And that's not something that is unique to Yelp. That's yeah. something that happens on the internet across the board, there's a term for it, it's, it's, it's astroturfing. And because that, that type of activity happens on the internet, we wanted to make sure that our site was useful for consumers. And so our engineers developed an algorithm, it's, it's called, it used to be called the review filter, it's uh, now called the recommendation software, it's gone through a few different iterations. But the goal is, again, to provide useful content for consumers. So why might some reviews not be recommended? Uh, one, the obviously fake reviews, not gonna, not gonna make it through. Uh, but also reviews that might be potentially biased, like reviews that are written by the friends or family of a business owner, or also reviews that we see coming from the same IP address as well. Um, and then finally, reviews that come from users that we just don't know a lot of information about. So um, everybody that's writing a review on Yelp has to create a profile to yeah. do so. We encourage them to leave as much information about themselves as they'd like, and uh, reviews that are coming from most the, the most active members of the Yelp community are, are more likely to be recommended. Um, so net net, uh, you know, our goal is to just make sure that we have quality content on the site, and that's also why millions of users continue to come back to Yelp because they know that they can trust what they're reading. Yeah. So do, now, if you have customers that you want to leave reviews, like hey, I see these folks come, they come in every single week, or you know, they're my they're my best client or whatever. Um, how how you know is it illegal to ask for a re review? Is it e you know legal to give them a free you know, 10% off next time they come in? How does that work? That's a great question. And the best way to think about this concept is in terms of black hat, gray hat, and white hat for, for all you SEO experts out there. And so by black hat, I mean, uh, these are practices that are you know, either illegal or against Yelp's terms of service. So um, specifically offering a financial incentive in exchange for review, that's that's black hat. Okay. Um, you know, if you're, if you're paying for reviews, that's against Yelp's terms of service. Also, on top of that, it's against FTC 
guidelines. And so I think uh, people are less familiar with that fact. And so specifically, if you are compensating somebody to write a review for your business, that then becomes a paid advertisement. And you have to disclose in the copy of that review uh, that that person was compensated. And uh, recently, a few businesses have gotten in trouble with, uh, with the FTC. And uh, most recently, a few businesses were fined a few thousand dollars by the New York State Attorney General for, for basically having a bunch of reviews that were, were bought. Um, gray hat, you know, if you go out and aggressively solicit reviews, that's not against Yelp's terms of service, but you may wind up with reviews that are not getting recommended because you're trying to push a bunch of people that don't use the site or maybe yeah. it's all your friends and family to go review your business. So really, what's the white hat practice, the best way to get reviews is to be organic about it. Um, there's a number of ways that we encourage business owners to do this. One. Uh, the, the first thing is uh, you can put badges on your website. We have HTML badges that any business owner can access at biz.yelp.com. Uh, it acts as a direct link back to your Yelp business page. Yep. Uh, we've even got one that counts how many five-star reviews you have, if you want to call that out specifically, yep. and that acts as a live link. Also, signage. Uh, if you go to yelp.com slash brand, you can request a window decal. You can also request our logos that you can use in signage that you can put up on your storefront. I also see some business owners even getting creative with their reviews and using their reviews on Yelp as marketing collateral. Yep. So you can take snippets from your positive reviews um, and use those in a lot of different ways, whether it's on signage or your business cards. I actually heard a really great story just this last week from a roofer here in San Francisco. And he told me that what he does whenever he gets uh, a bid to, to basically uh, give somebody an estimate, so he's going out to the home to tell them what it's going to cost for his team to do the job. On the form where they're when they're going to sign up, he actually has snippets of his Yelp reviews. That's great. And so what he what he does is he tells folks, you know, rather than him telling you, you know, I do the best work, you know, blah blah blah, because that's yeah. what any business is going to say. He actually says, these are reviews from real people that have used my roofing service, and this is what they have to say. So do you want to sign up? Yeah. And that's pretty compelling. So um, you know, I think again, just going back to how you get more reviews, you want to be organic about it. And also once you do get those reviews, you can repurpose them for marketing collateral to get even more business, which is then gonna, gonna help you get more reviews. Yeah, and I think you know, and I think it's it's pretty simple, uh, and I don't know if you have the stat on you, but you know, the more reviews that you respond to, I would imagine that you'd get more reviews. Like if if you're saying like, hey, you know, we really appreciate the support. Um, you know, thanks for coming in. Can't wait to see you next time. I'm sure that that, you know, more folks are going to be like, hey, I'm going to leave them a review. Like, they just, they understand us and they like us. And, you know, you show a little bit of love and they show it back. Well, from a, a reputation management standpoint, anecdotally, what I have seen is the businesses that are responding to reviews have a better likelihood of uh, getting reviews, specifically negative reviews, updated from negative to positive versus yeah. those that don't. Um, so that, that's a, something that people may not know is that Yelp users can update their review yep. once the original review is posted. And so again, if you're, you know, you're using the stop, drop, and roll method or you know, you're just consistently responding, you're going to have a better likelihood of having a strong reputation on, uh, on that front. One other thing too that we talked about earlier that I think is also really important, it's a major key for getting positive reviews and having a strong uh, reputation is good customer service. But yeah. there's some data behind this. We did a study and we found that if Yelp users mention good customer service in a review, that review is five times as likely to be five star versus one star. So literally there's a direct correlation between the customer service experience that people have with your business and then the star rating that they're gonna give you. So focus on good customer service above anything else. I, yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it makes sense, but it, the fact that there's data behind that, I mean, it, it really does, it, it points to the fact that this is this is something that you really, 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 really should be doing if you are a, uh, if you're a local business or if you're a business that just, uh, you know, wants to be on Yelp. For, you know, shifting to veterans, um, I think one of the things that's really important is telling your story, right? We see that with veteran-owned businesses or veteran entrepreneurs, um, telling your story of where you've been and where you're going and all that sort of stuff is really critical to uh, you know to why your customers buy from you and also to just show you know how you feel um, and, and kind of your thoughts on on your business and entrepreneurship and impacting the community. One of the ways is through photos, and you know I think that one of our biggest recommendations is in the photos that you're putting for your page. I, I saw that you mentioned to to put photos of your actual employees. Now, why is it that folks do that? 
Well, people like to be able to do business with other people, not necessarily a nameless, faceless corporation or business. So by putting photos of yourself and your staff up on your business page, you're humanizing it. And a lot of people want to support veteran-owned businesses, as you mentioned. So if you can call that out in the photos, a picture's worth a thousand words. And that is really going to help people understand who you are and also the fact that they are supporting a veteran-owned business. Um, interesting stat about photos, more data for you. Uh, we found that uh, photos actually have a direct impact on traffic. So if you want to get more organic traffic to your business page, add more photos. And uh, as long as they're high quality, clearly lit, and of course relevant to your business, you know, they're going to be really useful for consumers to really understand who you are again and also why they should use you. So how many photos can you upload um, on your profile page? It's unlimited. You can upload as many photos as you'd like for free. And it's absolutely something that I recommend that every veteran-owned business does. Yeah, I mean, it's like one of the things, I, you know, you, you have the, you know, access to the, to the veteran-owned business, um, you know, digital sticker and, and physical sticker. That's one of those photos that's it's a no-brainer to, to throw on your page. Um, you know, and people are, you know, especially they're going to be looking at photos of your employees, photos of you. Um, you know, you throw that on there and it's like, oh, yeah, they're a veteran-owned business. And then, you know, another creative thing that we've seen folks do is you take your photo, you know, of you in, in kind of your business attire. And then bottom right-hand corner, you have a photo of you in your, in your military uniform from whenever you served. And it's kind of a creative way to, to call back the past. And it's something that you know, not a lot of folks are doing, and it's and it can separate you as oh, this is a really cool place. I want to learn about this, um, or at least you know they go over check out your website or something like that. That's pretty creative. Um, so what I know we talk a lot about restaurants. Uh, you know, what is the most popular thing that people search for on Yelp? What are the most popular businesses, and and what are the you know types of businesses that really see the best traction? Yeah, great question. I think there's a common misconception that Yelp is a restaurant review site. Um, it used to be the largest category of reviewed businesses, but actually shopping, retail, is now the biggest segment, representing 23% of reviewed businesses on the site. Restaurants are represented at the 19%, and then home and local services represent 12%. So those are the, the top three categories as far as reviewed businesses. But you've got everything under the sun from health and fitness, uh, you've got real estate agents, lawyers, um, contractors, anything that you can you can think of. Where, wherever there's a basically a B2C local business where there's a face-to-face -face interaction with um, a customer and a business owner, you're likely to find that business on Yelp. So do you have to be a brick and mortar? I mean, if you're, you know, if you work from, you know, your home or whatever, um, do you have to have a physical address? Like what about like, you know, I see things like taco trucks pop up all the time, things like that. What about like your address and physical location? A lot of food trucks on Yelp. Uh, yeah. You don't have to have a brick and mortar, but you do have to be a local business. So I'll give you an example, uh, if you run a town car service, uh, you know, you're actually going out to your clients or customers yeah. or the roofer, for example, that I mentioned, yeah. people aren't coming to, to his, his home where he operates out of, but you know, he goes out. So if you are a local business, uh, you can absolutely have a listing on Yelp. How do the rankings work? So, you know, it, 20 things show up, you got one through 20. How does that work? Yeah, so the organic search results on Yelp factor in uh, keywords as well as location. So uh, specifically what I mean by that is if let's say that I, I need to find a contractor on Yelp and, or let's say specifically I need a, a remodel in my kitchen. So I might type in uh, kitchen remodeler in Yelp. Uh, it's going to give me a list of organic search results based on the keyword that I typed in there's also, if you're on the desktop side, a Google map that you'll see on the right-hand side of your screen with pins on it. If you zoom in or out of that map, the list is going to adjust based on the bird's eye view that it's looking at. If you're on mobile, if you type in kitchen remodeler in the mobile app, it's going to ask if you want to find that near your current location. And there, it's actually using the GPS in your phone to figure out where you're standing, and then it's going to give you search results based on your, your physical location. And that's... It's a really good thing for a business. Maybe you don't have a mobile optimized website. Maybe your website just isn't that good, and maybe you or you definitely don't have any GPS, you know, locating features on your website. But to know where physically you are, um, and and you know where your customer is, it's pretty valuable stuff. And it's something that on buyveteran.com uh, we have GPS tracking as well, and it, and it really they work in in tandem really well. Because, you know, you can go to that place, you can say, hey, here's a better known business on buyveteran.com. You know, let me check out the reviews on Yelp. Yep, what, 
you know, let me kind of cross-reference those two things. Um, and I think they work really well together. And it's just, that's hard to do as a business owner. It's hard to set up, you know, your website to be really good and mobile optimized and all that stuff. Um, but Yelp does it for you. And you. You know, Ian, you bring up a good point. I know some business owners that don't have a website at all. Yeah. And they just use Yelp as their de facto website because there's such a strong presence on desktop and mobile. It does all of those things that you mentioned for them. And you can manage it right from your pocket with, with your own, you know, business owner, um, with the Yelp business owner piece. So, you know, you can, and you can track who's coming to your business and all that. I mean, I, that's, it's so powerful as a business owner that, you know, for a free service, um, you know, just out of the box, you can get that done and, and not have to worry about anything else. It's pretty easy. You know, if you're not great at technology, is it easy to use? Is it somewhere in between? We strive to make it user friendly. So I would say your best bet is to download the mobile app that I mentioned, the Yelp for Business Owners app. Again, you can find that on iTunes and also Google Play. And you have all of the power of the free tools for business owners in the palm of your hand. You can effectively manage your business presence from your smartphone. Super user friendly. Uh, a lot of veterans are, are franchisees. Uh, is there a kind of franchise component to this? Is it Do folks use it on their own? Is it corporate or is it kind of just depend? You can do both. Uh, if you are a single location, you can claim that location. Also, if you have multiple locations, you can claim that as well. Um, I, I know uh, some franchisees have you know maybe 10, 20, even 100 yeah. locations under their belt. And you can absolutely claim all of those locations and manage them through Yelp. We have tools that address every phase of the game for business owners. Cool. Um, well, that, that's all I have. I really appreciate taking some time and sharing this. This is going to be the first uh, step of our series with Yelp. We're going to do some more tactical stuff coming up. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Um, where can uh, where can people find you? All right. Well, people can find me on Twitter if they want to follow me. At Darnell Justin is my Twitter handle. They should also check out biz.yelp.com to claim their free business owner's account. Again, download that mobile app, Yelp for Business Owners. It's free, quick, and easy. You can find it on iTunes and Google Play. And thank you so much for having me, Ian. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it as well. And uh, you can find me at Ian Faison on Twitter. You can find me on LinkedIn. Feel free to, uh, to drop me a line. Go to buyveteran.com and uh, you know, sign up for your Novoba membership. Really appreciate it and see you soon.